So here I have the three chemicals that you just saw. This is nickel, nickel sulfate, and then this is the, after it's been mixed with barium chloride. Um, and then here we have a solution after it's been had time to linger for a while. So what happened in this reaction is we did a double displacement where the barium and the nickel traded places. Now the nickel is what gives this our green color. So when you're seeing the green in the solution, that's the nickel ions in there. Okay. So what we have happening is the barium is trading places with the, with the nickel. And I end up with barium sulfate and nickel chloride. So, so what we're going to see in this reaction is, is that as those two things switch, we form a precipitate. So if we go through then and we start to look up, okay, well what's soluble in water and what's not? Barium and sulfate make an insoluble compound. Okay? So I would write down a solid for that. And nickel chloride is soluble in water, I'd write down aqueous. If you look at our picture here, when I mix these two together in the previous, in the previous video part, it formed some kind of milky precipitate. So something formed that was insoluble in the water. Now in this one, you can actually see that at the bottom. This is your barium sulfate down here. And then in here is your nickel chloride dissolved in water. Now, I mean it's broken apart into pieces, but your nickel chloride is remaining in the solution while the barium sulfate has settled out. Now this, you can even see a little bit of color distinguishment here and here where we're seeing that start to fade out to nothing. So that's why I have the nickel next to it, so you can see what the, the nickel gives that green color. And so I end up with a solid of this and an aqueous of that when I do my reaction. Now, how did I get this two here? When you go through and do this, what you can do is, whatever charges you begin the reaction with, they will maintain. So the barium here is not changing its electrons when it does this process. It's just moving ions around. And so this still has a 2 plus charge, this still has a 2 minus charge, and that's why I have one of each. Now the nickel is still a 2 plus and the chloride's a minus 1, that's why I need this 2 here. Not because there are two chlorides here, for other reactions you'll see those change. But for this one, because this is a 2 plus charge and this is a minus 1, I end up needing that, that 2 to, to make this work. That's for writing the formula. Once I'm done with that, to go through and balance it, you would need to go through and actually you don't need to do anything, do you? Because there's two chlorides, two chlorides, one barium, one barium, one sulfate, one sulfate, one nickel, one nickel. So to give our final answer, we would just get rid of these charges. And that would be how we would write that out. Now I want to stress to you here is the idea that this solid here is insoluble in water. We call this things like a precipitate or, or an insoluble salt or things like that. And then this here is still dissolved in the solution, and when you were seeing those chemicals mix, that's what you were seeing. You were seeing this barium sulfate form scattered throughout here in a suspension that now has settled out because it's insoluble in water, whereas the nickel chloride has remained in solution, like it would show up over here where I'm seeing those nickel ions give that green color. Okay. And so, so when you're doing a double displacement, usually you'll form a precipitate or a gas or, or water or something that kind of indicates a change has taken place for that particular reaction.